Welcome back to the Ancestral Findings Podcast. Today, let's explore the fascinating story of John Tyler, the unexpected president. From his early life in Virginia to his rise in politics, uncover the legacy of this influential figure. John Tyler was born on March 29, 1790, at Greenway Plantation in Charles City County, Virginia. He was the sixth of eight children born to John Tyler Sr., a prominent Virginia planter, judge, and friend of Thomas Jefferson and Mary Armistead Tyler. Growing up in a family deeply rooted in Virginia's political and social elite, Tyler was groomed from an early age for a life of public service. Tyler attended the College of William and Mary, where he graduated in 1807 at the age of 17. He went on to study law under the tutelage of his father and was admitted to the Virginia Bar in 1809. Tyler quickly established himself as a successful lawyer, but his passion for politics soon drew him into public life. Tyler's political career began in the Virginia House of Delegates, where he served from 1811 to 1816. His tenure in the state legislature was marked by his strong advocacy for states' rights and limited federal government, principles that would define his political philosophy throughout his career. Tyler's eloquence and steadfast adherence to his beliefs earned him respect and recognition among his peers. In 1816, Tyler was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, where he served until 1821. During his time in Congress, he continued to champion states' rights and opposed measures that he believed overstepped federal authority, such as the Second Bank of the United States. After a brief hiatus from politics, Tyler returned to serve as the governor of Virginia from 1825 to 1827. His tenure as governor further solidified his reputation as a staunch defender of states' rights and limited government. Tyler's national prominence grew when he was elected to the U.S. Senate in 1827. As a senator, he maintained his commitment to states' rights and often found himself at odds with the policies of President Andrew Jackson. Tyler's opposition to Jackson's use of executive power, particularly his handling of the national bank and tariff issues, led him to break with the Democratic Party and join the emerging Whig Party. Tyler's principled stance against what he perceived as executive overreach earned him a reputation as a man of conviction, but it also made him a political maverick. In 1836, he resigned from the Senate in protest against a resolution censuring Jackson's removal of federal deposits from the National Bank. This act of defiance endeared him to the Whigs, who admired his willingness to stand by his principles. In the 1840 presidential election, the Whig Party sought to capitalize on the growing discontent with the Democratic administration of Martin Van Buren. They nominated William Henry Harrison, a war hero for president, and John Tyler as his running mate. The campaign, known for its slogan, Tippecanoe and Tyler II, emphasized Harrison's military achievements and Tyler's commitment to states' rights. The Whig campaign was a resounding success, and Harrison and Tyler won by a landslide. Tyler assumed the role of vice president, a position he viewed primarily as ceremonial. However, fate had other plans. Just 31 days into his presidency, Harrison died of pneumonia, making Tyler the first vice president to ascend to the presidency upon the death of a sitting president. Tyler's sudden rise to the presidency in April 1841 was met with uncertainty and controversy. The U.S. Constitution was vague on the issue of presidential succession, leading to questions about whether Tyler should assume the full powers of the presidency or merely serve as an acting president. Tyler decisively declared himself the rightful president and took the oath of office, setting a crucial precedent for future successions. Tyler's assertion of presidential authority faced resistance from members of his own party. The Whigs, who had expected Harrison to be a pliable figurehead, were dismayed by Tyler's independence and refusal to follow the party line. This tension between Tyler and the Whig leadership would define much of his presidency. One of Tyler's first significant actions as president was to veto two bills aimed at establishing a new national bank, which were central to the Whig Party's economic agenda. 
Tyler's opposition to the bank stemmed from his strict interpretation of the Constitution and his belief in states' rights. These vetoes infuriated the Whigs, leading to a complete breakdown in relations between Tyler and his party. In response, all but one member of Tyler's cabinet resigned and the Whigs expelled him from the party. Despite his lack of party support, Tyler pursued a domestic agenda that reflected his political beliefs. He advocated for a reduction in tariffs, believing that lower tariffs would benefit Southern agriculture and promote free trade. In 1842, he signed the Tariff of 1842, which, although it raised tariff rates, was a compromise that averted a potential fiscal crisis. Tyler also worked to address issues related to westward expansion and the settlement of public lands. He supported the Preemption Act of 1841, which allowed settlers to claim and purchase land before it was offered for sale by the government. This act encouraged westward migration and helped shape the nation's expansionist policies. While Tyler's domestic policy was marked by conflict and controversy, his foreign policy achievements were more successful. One of his most notable accomplishments was the annexation of Texas. Texas had declared its independence from Mexico in 1836 and sought to join the United States. However, the issue of annexation was contentious as it raised concerns about the expansion of slavery and potential conflict with Mexico. Undeterred, Tyler pursued annexation with determination. In 1844, he signed a treaty to annex Texas, but it failed to gain the necessary two-thirds majority in the Senate. Tyler then took an unconventional route, using a joint resolution of Congress to achieve annexation. The resolution passed in early 1845, and Texas was admitted to the Union shortly before Tyler left office. Tyler's presidency also saw significant developments in U.S.-British relations. In 1842, he signed the Webster-Ashburton Treaty, which resolved several border disputes between the United States and British North America, now Canada. The treaty established the boundary between Maine and New Brunswick, addressed issues related to the Great Lakes, and improved diplomatic relations between the two nations. After leaving office in 1845, Tyler retired to his plantation, Sherwood Forest, in Virginia. Despite his political isolation during his presidency, Tyler remained active in public affairs. He continued to advocate for states' rights and Southern interests, increasingly aligning himself with the pro-slavery faction as tensions between the North and South escalated. Tyler's political career took a dramatic turn during the secession crisis of 1860-1861. to 1861. As Southern states began to secede from the Union, Tyler initially sought a peaceful resolution through the Washington Peace Conference, which he chaired. However, when efforts to prevent secession failed, Tyler cast his lot with the Confederacy. He was elected to the Confederate House of Representatives, but died before he could take his seat. John Tyler married Letitia Christian in 1813, and they had eight children together. Letitia was a devoted wife and mother, but maintained a low public profile due to her delicate health. She suffered a stroke in 1839 and passed away in 1842, becoming the first First Lady to die while her husband was in office. In 1844, Tyler remarried Julia Gardner, who was 30 years his junior. They had seven children together, making Tyler the father of 15 children in total, the most of any U.S. president. Julia embraced her role as First Lady with enthusiasm and was known for her charm and social grace. Tyler was known for his steadfastness and adherence to his principles. His commitment to states' rights and limited federal government often put him at odds with his party and his opponents, but he remained resolute in his beliefs. Tyler's independence and willingness to stand by his convictions earned him respect, even from those who disagreed with him. John Tyler's presidency, often overshadowed by his tumultuous relationship with the Whig Party and his unconventional ascent to the office, left a lasting impact on American history. His assertion of presidential authority set a crucial precedent for the orderly transfer of power in the event of a president's death, a precedent that has been upheld ever since. Tyler's success in annexing Texas had significant implications for the nation's expansion and the sectional conflicts that would eventually lead to the Civil War.
His foreign policy achievements, including the Webster-Ashburton Treaty, demonstrated his ability to navigate complex international issues and maintain peaceful relations with foreign powers. Despite the controversies and challenges of his presidency, Tyler's commitment to his principles and his role in shaping the nation's expansionist policies are important aspects of his legacy. His life and career reflect the complexities and contradictions of a nation grappling with issues of federal authority, states' rights, and the expansion of slavery. Check out these books of John Tyler's life and his contributions to American history. John Tyler by Gary May. This biography, part of the American President series, offers a concise yet comprehensive overview of John Tyler's life and presidency. Gary May provides an engaging narrative that highlights Tyler's political career, challenges, and accomplishments. President Without a Party, The Life of John Tyler by Christopher J. Leahy. Christopher J. Leahy's detailed biography delves into the complexities of John Tyler's presidency and his political isolation after breaking with the Whig Party. The book provides a thorough analysis of Tyler's policies, leadership style, and impact on American history. John Tyler, The Accidental President by Edward P. Crapole. Edward P. Crapole explores the life and legacy of John Tyler, focusing on his unexpected rise to the presidency and the significant events that defined his term in office. The book examines Tyler's political philosophy, his domestic and foreign policies, and his enduring influence. The Presidencies of William Henry Harrison and John Tyler by Norma Lois Peterson. This book examines the presidencies of William Henry Harrison and John Tyler. Norma Lois Peterson offers a comparative analysis of their administrations with a particular focus on Tyler's efforts to navigate the political landscape following Harrison's death. Tyler II, a biography of John and Julia Gardner Tyler by Robert Seeger II. Robert Seeger II presents a dual biography of John Tyler and his second wife, Julia Gardner Tyler. This book provides a comprehensive look at their personal and political lives, offering insights into their partnership and the role Julia played during and after Tyler's presidency. Thanks for listening to the Ancestral Findings podcast. Be sure to visit AncestralFindings.com to download a free genealogy ebook and sign up for the weekly historical postcard giveaway. I hope you have a wonderful day, and as always, happy searching.